Hi guys, it is March 25, 2018. I was sent a link to an interview with Chris Haskell by a subscriber who was concerned that Chris might be using his geoengineering chemtrail activism to get support for something unrelated. I will link below to the full interview and it's an interview that I think um, you should listen to because it really demonstrates how we are so not the United States of America that we used to know that a lot of people think that they're still living in. Uh, even the United States of America that we used to know was not quite the United States of America that we thought we were living, that we knew. Um, but now it's very obvious. So her concern, um, first I want to say that I'm really, uh, I'm really, do I want to say grateful? Is that the word? I don't know. Impressed, maybe? When people hear something from somebody else and what they hear sets off a red flag for them, but before they make publicly their presumption that they think is fact, which hurts people, um, you check it out. You know, you, you get reality checks. You you talk with other people. You get them to listen to something. What What is it that they're hearing? So thank you for that. Um, and you will hear Chris, because I'm going to play just a few excerpts of this interview. Chris Haskell, by the way, is a geoengineering chemtrail activist in Arizona. He was arrested. Um, I'm going to let you listen to the charges that he reads. Three terrorism charges, three felony charges, I believe. But what set this in motion was his sister, who called the FBI. And based on what she had to say, and one of the things that she said was clearly her opinion, which could have been checked out by our FBI or even local law enforcement, you know, the days of when uh, you had to wait for the documentation on somebody, that, that's gone. Now they have access to yeah, people's history. Everything is going in a cloud saved in the cloud. Everything is inputted into a computer and our government has your medical records, your mental health records, all of your records. So when I heard that the sister claimed that he was psychotic or something and they couldn't, you know, uh, go and try to verify that as fact, they just listened to the opinion of his sister. Today, we live in a world where if somebody doesn't like you, they can call the police, they can get you locked up in a psychiatric ward or arrested. And wow, you know, that innocent before proven guilty, gone. So when you listen to the full interview, you will hear what our fabulous FBI and the Sheriff's Department in Arizona, and the police department where he lives. Um, you know, now they make this big staging of their strength, their force. So before checking anything out, they come to his father father's house, 87 years old, in two armored vehicles, using bullhorns, of course, the community has to know everything. They put his father, 87, in handcuffs. He's out there for hours. He left the door open when he came out, but they decided to break the front windows and go in through the front windows. Look, the insanity that is very obvious today the neighbor came out and wanted to know what was going on. They told the neighbor to get away, it doesn't involve you. Then the trashing of the father's house and the uh, sheds and a trailer used as storage and beating Chris up. And 
the employer, Chris's employer, to get him involved. Now he's not working anymore because they won't return a vehicle that is a work vehicle. And all based on a family member calling. Now, let's think about that. Those activists who are boots on the ground, now we're all on the radar. What we do on YouTube and Facebook and all of these social media sites, we're being monitored. But those who are boots on the ground, you better bet that they are being monitored. Or, yes, they are. Sorry for how I phrase that, but they are. Now, if they're doing something that, and we don't have charges for chemtrail or geoengineering activism, at least not yet, you got to get them on charges. But if they're doing something that is obviously legal, well, what do they do? How do they get them? And let's say they get a call from someone who has an ulterior motive to the call and it's a windfall for law enforcement because boom they got it they can lock that person up whether in a psych ward or in a jail and I believe that this is what is happening to Chris Haskell yes um, even though the sister set in motion the arrest and how the arrest took place. It's based on this powder found on uh, these signs that he makes, the geoengineering signs. I believe that he was set up. And I do want to say before I let you listen to him, you know when people are asked questions, they're in an interview. And if they have an ulterior motive, if they are, well, like, you know, Chris Haskell, if he is using his activism to get support for something that is completely unrelated, I don't think that he would be, well, first of all, if you're trying to get support for something unrelated, then I would think that people are smart enough to not come right out and say, you know all of what took place but you can tell you know if people are holding something back or lying about something or trying to manipulate people is it foolproof no but you listen to the tone you listen to the cadence of their of their um, speech you listen to do they have a flow you know in their speech are they speaking naturally or are they humming and hawing and um, you know, not answering as quickly as Chris was answering? Are they trying to think of how to answer something? Um, again, it's not foolproof, but that generally is an indication for me that somebody is lying. So, I will let you listen to just bits of this in interview. And then I'll get back to you. But it is, I wish we could all come together and stop this fighting and speculating and throwing it out as a fact and making presumptions about people that we don't know. Um, it's really, it really hurts people. And Chris does need support. You know, when I first came on YouTube, I was really impressed with how people were working together. And yes, there were, you know, dramas, I'm sure, going on then. But, you know, people were, you know, there were the trolls, but you didn't get these ordinary subscribers writing such hateful, cruel comments about people that well, whether it's true or not, there are presumptions about people that they don't know. Even if it's true, you know, what's the, 
why add the cruelty or the hatred or whatever, but I just didn't see what I'm seeing now. So there is far more division than there was six years ago. So we're moving in the opposite direction, guys. And when we lose activists, especially those activists that are boots on the ground, and Chris has had an influence where he lives in Arizona, educating people, we get weaker. When we gain people, we get stronger. And when we hold on to those who do need support, especially when they're facing terrorism charges, that's when we really need to not even think much about it, but just get behind these people. If we can't do that, they do ultimately get destroyed completely. And when you are in the midst of having to fight charges of terrorism, you do need an attorney, you do need money, when you don't have the resources, that creates an awful lot of fear and anxiety and stress. And those who have the resources, well, they're in a much better position to do this. Those who don't, eventually, they'll go down. So listen to this interview, and I'll get back for a few minutes. Thanks, guys. Why, why, when, when did you get arrested and where were the charges? Okay, well, uh, basically where, where it started even before I got arrested is when they, they had already apparently gotten a, a search warrant. And uh, uh, let me read the charges to you yes, right yes. off of the paperwork, okay? And I have three of uh, these counts, three counts of terrorism, class two felonies which is basically equivalent to a wow. uh, manslaughter. Oh my you God. murder someone. Wow. Okay, then I also have three count four, uh, which is class four felonies, or I mean three of the uh, class four felonies, which are uh, manufacturing, possessing, transporting, selling, or transferring a prohibited weapon. Okay, and, and those will get real simple too. Those are all referring to what happened for my first three charges. And what they're talking about is they say it's cabasol. Oh my gosh. Cabasol. And basically that what I know I put in my house all over the place is DE, powdered DE, diatomaceous earth. Oh so wow. those are my three charges at the end because I had cabasol oh at gosh. my house, which is diatomaceous earth that they sell all over everywhere. Oh my perfectly God. legal. Oh my okay. God. So the first three counts, terrorism, are, uh, let's see here, I'll read it to you specifically, on or day on or about the 7th day of March 2017, Christopher Haskell intentionally or knowingly placed in a public or private place a simulated infectious biological substance or a radiological agent with the intent to terrify, oh my intimidate, threaten, or harass in violation of ARS uh, 13-2308.01. Oh so there you got it. It is a simulated infectious biological substance. And what, what occurred here, to, to let you know, Luca, is, is uh, basically whoever set me up, they took three of my signs, and these were signs that I had put in my alley to be picked up by... Uh, whoever wants to pick them up, I've for years had that policy. I put signs in my backyard. Yes. And people pick them up so they get free signs. And whoever did this put some powder, and I, I don't know if, it, if it's like the, what I was talking about before, DE. I don't know what it is. But uh, they said it was Cabasil, and it is um, a non, it's, it wasn't threatening. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't hurt anyone. Exactly. So it's no poison. Yeah. So somebody put on the back of three of my signs, and they wrote something on there like, don't get on skin. And I said, well, I kept arguing the, the fact that, okay, first of all, I didn't put up those signs. There was only three signs. Yeah. That's why I have three counts. Yeah. Okay? Three signs that had this powder on the back of them. So, I, you know, I don't know what exactly happened, but I'm assuming probably the police department had put them on there. 
or or better yet, somebody that maybe the person that does pick them up normally from me. Who you think is behind all this? They need to just to justify yeah. their, their, their their budget. They need to create an, uh, some sort of a fear into people to create an enemy so they can justify their paycheck. Or maybe there is really some sort of an agenda why they want to do this to you. What do you think? I have no idea at this point. Well, and I can, I'll give you some insight and give everyone some insight. Uh, is there's two main reasons, and and yes, it's because they they know who I am. They know quite well. Over the years, I inform a lot of people in crazy ways, in, in ways that just blow away what anybody could think somebody can do. So anyway, they, they wanted me to shut up. But then you got number two is my sister. Basically, has always hated me all her life. So that, I, I, I won't even get into that, but just, you know, they have no relationship there. And then now we're getting to the point where my dad's getting old, and he owns Mount Lemon property up there, and and they, uh, basically her and and my brother, are thinking about how much money this is worth, this Mount Lemon property. So literally, she and I have it in the police reports. She told them, this is why they abused the shit, the heck out of me. When when they got me, they beat me down and then kicked me in the back of the neck and while I'm attached to a dog. Gee. And the reason why she told them that I had hand grenades that I had multiple weapons, and that I am the next Jared Loeffner. Oh, my God. Because she wants to see me go down, and my dad sells property, and she gets to turn the thing into money. So you have evidence. She, One second. I need to, because when you mention somebody, I need to have, of course, uh, you, this is uh, what you're saying, and I don't know the other side. My point is, in the police report, you have this as evidence, you're saying? Yeah, uh, yeah the evidence that she, she said that I am, I am crazy, and I am I'm psychotic. Wow. And that's all she has. She gets her opinion. Okay, so the sister says that he's psychotic, which the FBI and local law enforcement could have checked out. Uh, they have access to those documents, and they could have checked out his history. They didn't do that. They do a destructive search and don't, don't have uh, any evidence that he had hand grenades or the weapons that his sister had alleged he had. But instead, they decide to get him on powder on the geoengineering signs. It's clear to me that they wanted to get him on something and that he was set up. Now, why did they want to get him? Probably because he's a geoengineering chemtrail activist out on uh, the streets yelling loudly. So yes, this man absolutely does need support, in my opinion. And I hope, I hope that he gets it. And before I end, I just want to say there's an awful lot of people who cannot believe that a sister could do that. Well, you just don't come from those types of families. A sister could absolutely do that. And unfortunately, there's an awful lot of people who have family members and they're looking at, you know, the near end of their parents' life and they do things to make sure that they will be getting the money from that parent. And there are siblings who do the kinds of things to destroy other siblings' uh, life, literally, or they will speak badly you know, to the parent, trying to um, influence how the parent sees their sibling. All for money. Money is a, I'm sorry, we speak values, we live the value of money. And when you do have these siblings who so don't care about you, they can send your life into a nightmare. Trust me, 
I know because I'm living it. So please, you know, that's my take on that interview and what Chris has said and what set the motion, uh, what set the arrest into motion. There's always, whatever happens in life, there's always somebody who's setting something in motion. And you really do have to think, boy, truth, it is so demanding because it requires a tremendous amount of energy to look into as many details as we can find. And then we might not even be able to get all of the details because the FBI, local law enforcement, the sheriff's department in Arizona, they're not going to come out and say, we wanted to get him. And we use this as an excuse. We got the arrest due to his sister calling. We couldn't find anything that substantiated the sister's claims. So we're going to stick some powder on the geoengineering signs and get them on terrorism. Nobody should have to live this. No one. This should just so not happen to anybody. But it happens. Details are different, but it does happen to a lot of people. Hope you have a good night. Ciao, guys.